Okay, so our last thing here we're going to look at today is the use of filters. And it's usually what new people that are new to Photoshop really get excited about the most because you can do a lot of creative things quickly and easily. So you'll notice right now I have a background layer, that's it. When I go up to filter, I get a whole collection of them. We'll talk about smart filters down the road. We also have something called Liquify, which is one of my favorite tools, especially when you're doing portraiture and editing people. It's a good way to take a few pounds off the face, the arms, and other places. Uh, it does open up a separate window, so I'm just going to wait for that to pop up here. And once it does, we'll show you what Liquify can do to this image. It's not really appropriate for this image, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So here's the window. Down in the bottom corner, there is zoom. So if I need to change the scale of the zoom, I can do that. Uh, over here are the types of tools. Okay, and you can go through and play with different ones. I'm just going to use this finger tool right now. And what it does is it liquefies the image so I can pick it up and move it. So if I want to make the sea lion slightly larger, I can do that. If I want to restore them all, I just hit restore all, it goes back to the original. I have a twirl. So if I want to make the grass or the trees up here spin in circles, I just click on it several times and I can make a twirl. And what it's doing is basically letting the colors and the information turn to water or liquefy it so you can move it pretty easily. So I'm just going to cancel that. That's one of the really popular ones. Uh, the other ones you can sort through, there's quite a few. If you just go to filter gallery, you'll get a good view of most of them. And they're broken up in little chunks. So when I click on film grain, I get to see how it is applied to the image. And then over here I can see there's grain, highlight area, and you just move the sliders back and forth, kind of exploring what they can do. Uh, I'll go to underpainting, something like that. Maybe I want to have a bigger brush, makes it blotchier. And a lot of this is just fun stuff. You know, there are a few cases where you're going to use this all the time. It's normally just a little bit of a an accent, uh, like anything. If you overuse it, it looks terrible. Uh, stained glass, something funky. You can change the cell size, and you get the idea. There's a whole bunch of different options that you can apply to any kind of photo. Uh, what we'd like to look at, and this is kind of a neat aspect, is if I create a new layer, if I duplicate this layer, and there it comes. Oops, I freed it. I want to duplicate it. There it is. Okay, now I can apply a filter just to this layer, so maybe I will put a blur on there, and I'm just going to do a motion blur, which is a directional blur. I'm going to make it go maybe straight up and down just for kicks. I'll stretch it a lot, and I'll hit OK. So now I have a blurry layer on top of a clear layer. If I can turn those off. Now on the blurry layer, if I select the eraser tool, I can erase away some of the blurry layer and reveal the sharp layer underneath it. And that's one way you can do some funky effects. It looks like the whole thing is falling. Uh, you use the softness of the brush to s help smooth that over. So if I go back up here to the hardness of the brush, you'll notice it's turned right down and I just soften it to the edges. So there's one possible use for it. You'll notice on the layer palette over here there's a hole right where the sea line used to be. If I turn off the bottom layer, you can see how I have drilled a hole right through to the bottom layer. Turn it back on. If I turn the top layer off, I go back to a clear image. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to use a selection tool and I'm going to select just this area. Now if I used my image adjustments, I could change the brightness and it would only affect what's inside that area. So let's see if it works for filters as well. So I'm going to just move this over a little bit. I'm going to invert that selection. So you'll notice now the little marching ants are all around the outside. So the actual area I'm working with is this inside box right here. Not this guy, but the one around the outside. It's like a rectangular donut. And I'm going to apply another fo filter here and I'm going to put uh, I don't know, let's try Ocean Ripple. No idea what this will do. Let's take a look. So, can't really see it in there. It's starting to go now. I'm going to up the magnitude a bit. And you'll notice it's only being applied in that outside shape. So let's see if I go to glass. I can 
could do something a little more. There we go. Now you can start to see that really getting messed up. I hit Control D, Command D, and now everything outside that box is all ripply and looking like you're seeing through old glass. So keep in mind that your selections uh, work with your adjustments, they work with your filters, they work with a lot of different things, and you can make some pretty creative stuff when you start mixing them all together. Okay, And keep in mind the use of different layers. Uh, that can be a lifesaver when you start to get some pretty big images. So next week we're going to look at layer masking and that'll add a whole new element. Uh, but you really need to play with this before you're ready for layer masking because it's another kind of a paradigm shift or concept that will push your brains a little. Okay, good luck.